The U.S. Air Force Special Operations Weather Team has mastered the science of predicting nature's forces. And they're about to give a meteorology major the rare chance to experience tomorrow's technology today. My name's Todd Swizzler, and today I'm going to make science fiction a reality. The Air Force Special Operations Weather Team, or SAW-T, are environmental data collectors. They are weather specialists with weapons. Today, Todd Whistler, a meteorology major from Tallahassee, Florida, is going to get an intensive lesson in SAW-T technology and tactics. I got interested in weather when I was a junior in high school. And I woke up one morning and it was like someone hit me in the back of the head with a brick and said, hey, do weather, and I was like, okay. Good morning. Hey, Todd, Lieutenant Colonel Benson. I'm the commander of the 10th Combat Weather Squadron. This is Lieutenant Reyes, one of my team leaders. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you both. So what is SAW-T? SAW-T is Special Operations Weather Team. We do more than just the weather. We collect uh, information on river systems. We do avalanche assessments. We do surf zone observations on the beach. And we do terrain assessments. All the data that we can collect contributes to a better forecast. Before Todd can join the weather team in the field, he must learn some of their basic tactical skills, such as repelling. It's part of what a SAW team must know in order to operate in hostile environments. All right, Todd, today we're going to send you off our 60-foot tower here. Now I want you to back up with your heels on the edge. I want you to, to, to go ahead and uh, lean back and do it like an L shape. I want you to give me a good push, and I want you to pendulum over to the right side, see if you can grab that edge. Okay, that's good. A weatherman needs his toys, and the sow tees are tactical, practical, and high-tech. So I'll start you off here with the uh, military-grade GPS. Oh, that's much different than in my car. A little bit different than that. Um, these will actually allow you to get down to the exact spot on the Earth where you are. There's no fudge factor in that. This is our latest and greatest computer here. It will do everything that this big guy here will do but it's about a third of the size. This basically hooks up to another radio and we can use this to send back weather observations, that kind of thing. This is our laser range finder. It actually will send out a laser beam and you just look through it just like a pair of regular binoculars, hit the button, and it'll tell you how far away something is. One of the things that we as weather guys use it as is if we have clouds in the sky and we don't know exactly how uh, high up they are, you can actually look through here, hit the button, bounce it off and it'll tell you exactly how high the cloud is from you. So out of all these instruments, which one would you say that you use the most? Well, without a doubt, that would be our handy dandy Kestrel here. This does everything. It will calculate wind speed, tell you the wind direction, it'll tell you temperature, humidity, dew point, uh, barometric pressure, everything. This is your entire weather station in the palm of your hand. If you follow me right over here to our, uh, it's called a Marwin or an MW31. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with the uh, weather balloon scenarios. Oh, yeah. In the field, a weather balloon can be launched quickly. A radio sonde attached below the balloon will transmit atmospheric pressure, temperature, wind speed, and humidity to a portable base station. So this is your receiver. Exactly. Oh, you exactly. see, on top of our building, it's a huge dome that, you know, probably your whole team could fit inside of, and right. it's just one big satellite. They've taken that giant dome that you know and basically shrunk it down to this size. Weather and data collection is essential on land, water, anywhere that airmen or other forces might operate. Another big part of the South Team mission is what we refer to as river reports. Uh, we provide river reports to ground forces who may need to cross uh, rivers. All right, so we're out here on the river. We got our security set up, so we should be good to go. This is our flow watch. We have this side as a sensor. We drop this part into the water. You get your flow rate and temperature. It shows up right there. Flow rate in meters per second, temperature in Celsius. That's it. Very cool. Uh, we also have this device. Uh, it's a depth sander. You put this bottom part here into the water. And you got this screen, and it'll give you your reading. OK. How is this important to what you do as a SAW-T? There's a rickety bridge in Afghanistan. If you want to know, is it going to be safer to risk it? take that bridge or if you just want to port the river. Okay. With command of the waterways in check, it's time for an eye in the sky. The team launches a remotely piloted aircraft called the Raven. What this aircraft does for us is that it can give us uh, winds, 
temperature, pressure, all from the safety of us being here in the vehicle. Also, a small camera is mounted on it, so it also acts as a forward reconnaissance element for us before we send out our guys, so we can send a little bird up there without having to send somebody in harm's way. As a meteorology student, I knew the Air Force did do some forecasting, but I did not know the tactical side of what Sao T now does, and I'm excited to see that there are way more applications to meteorology than just forecasting in front of a computer. 